Uh, hello everybody and welcome to another video from the Canal Sidings Model Railway Channel. Um, in my last video I did mention that I was doing a lot of wiring diagrams um, and to be honest, oh, excuse me, to be honest I got wiring crazy um, and decided that I needed a fix from that. I have basically finished the diagram. The next job is to tear down the um, temporary track on the new baseboards, remove the baseboards and get in behind and do the wiring. So from that point on there will be no running until a lot of wiring has been done. But what I decided to do was have a break from that um, and I decided to have a play with some of the locos that I've accumulated over the last couple of years um, which have really never been out of their box or tested um, and pretty much all need DCC decoders and I spent about a week now playing on JMRI Decoder Pro and um, adding some uh, various bits and pieces when I came across a project that um, I've been planning to do for some time. Um, <clears throat> it's based upon a series of posts, a thread that I look, I saw in on RM Web more than ten years ago now, involving a very interesting conversion. Um, the the days of in those days. The conversion was really a very strange one to do um, and was only based upon personal preference as to who made the best body for this particular brand of loco. Nowadays there's a, a better reason for doing it which we'll go into a little bit later. Um, I also put a link to that RM web thread at the bottom of the video. I think anybody can watch it, they don't have to be members of RM, RM Web. But what I did notice was that all the pictures in it have now been obliterated with a photo bucket logo. Um, and in order to see them properly what I found was if you uh, click them or double click them or right click them, I can't remember which one, then you would pick up that photograph quite easily from photo bucket and be able to see it properly. So, but the text is interesting, um, and I got everything I needed from that text. So, as I say, I'll post that. But, I know you're saying, get on with it, what is it? Well, okay, I will bring it into view so that you can see what it is. So there we have it. It's a class 31. Um, the conversion is by no means finished. The eagle eye will notice that there is no glazing um, and may well notice even what the conversion is all about. Um, but uh, first of all, as you can see, it runs reasonably well. The first thing is I'll just show you what it can do and then I'll talk about it for a minute. Then we'll go to the bench and I'll open it up and you can see exactly what it consists of. So I shall give it a, a couple of runs round Inglethwaite. I'm going to leave the camera here so you'll just see it go past. My fault, didn't connect the train up. Thought I had. I'll do it manually. Right. I have now connected the train up. Now as you will notice, this is quite a long train. 
There are quite a lot of vehicles in it. There are nine in fact. Nine res type bogey vehicles. Now the reason that I'm running it on a long train is because one of the um, things that worried me about the conversion was will there be enough weight? Will it be heavy enough to pull anything? And um, I think that proves that yes it is. Um, and so far I've added no extra weight other than was easy to do. And I'll let it run past again slower. As you can see it runs really well. And obviously they have the wheel slip, the anti-wheel slip system engaged because there's no slip there, it is pulling those nine vehicles perfectly okay. Round my bends, my curves and everything. So we'll take it all the way around once more, bring it back, and I'll just tell you what it is to start with. Um, you may already have guessed, a lot of you probably have, but some of you will be thinking, what is this idiot doing? Okay, so as you can see, it does run quite well. It runs quietly. So what is it? Well, I expect many of you have already realised that the body is a Lima Class 31 body. Um, but I'm not sure whether many of you will guess what's pulling it, what, what's under it. So I will tell you. Um, it still has the Lima chassis block block the, the, the chassis frame underneath it which has been fairly heavily modified and what's inside it the mechanism is that from a Hornby class 31 now as I said back in 2010 a conversion like that didn't really sound uh, particularly sane um, because it was taking an expensive locomotive and putting a cheap, some people would say nasty body on it. However, that's not the case because um, consensus of opinion generally is that the Lima Class 31 body is actually a better representation of the prototype than is the Hornby body. In terms of curves of sides and things, um, I don't know, I can't speak from that because I'm no expert on that kind of thing. Um, but the Lima body certainly does have a few uh, detail problems like moulded handrails and no lights and all sorts of things like that. So ripping the guts out of a Hornby 31 and putting them in there and all the difficulties that it entails seems a bit of a strange thing. However, of course, um, history took a change for the worst when Hornby Class 31 chassis started rotting away due to the, the um, dreaded tin worm or mazak weevil or whatever you like to call it where the chassis just rots, the metal rots due to a problem that they had in the Chinese factory of contamination of the material. Um, so, and, and because of Hornby's uh, reticence to actually allow people to buy new bodies and new chassis blocks to put the mechanisms in 
There are a fair few Class 31s about now, which are useless. Um, and this is a way of resurrecting a very good mechanism. So, what I'll do now is I'll take you over to the bench, we'll open it up and you can see how we do it. Okay, so here is what's left of the donor vehicle. Um, a very bent chassis, uh, uh, sorry, a very bent body with holes in it all over the place where it's cracked. Um, it's cracked on this side as well. Um, and the ends have got cracks in the corners. This end has cracks on one corner. Um, I've taken the bits and pieces out of it in case they might be useful. Um, and you can see that it's no longer a level body. Okay, it's got a bit there, but this bottom, this end bit here is twisted to hell. Um, and here is all that I've got left of the chassis. The centre piece um, was as bad as this. These are the end pieces that broke off of it, as they usually do. And as you can see, this is a piece of the Mazak metal. I can just break it to pieces. It's just lost all its coherence. It just falls apart. You know, broken the buffer beam in half. That's how bad the rot gets. And it completely destroys the body. And Hornby will not supply spare chassis and spare bodies. They just won't do it. Even for something as serious as this, they will not put themselves out and provide new bodies and chassis to people who have sm got smashed. Um, I mean, the, the, they could request that you send them the chassis part and the body part to show you're actually going to do this. Um, and they will keep that and send you a new chassis and body. They don't have to build the chassis for you, just let you have the parts, even if they charge a minimal fee. But no, they don't want to know. So, there are a few people like me about now who have got uh, bad vibes about Hornby. And um, yes, Hornby have improved again now that their saviour Simon Kohler is back. But I'm afraid Simon isn't going to last there forever. He's well into his retirement years now I think he loves what he does and he's very good at it and he has managed again to drag Hornby up by their bootstraps but will it last I doubt it not for very long anyway Simon I think will hang on for as long as he feels he can um, and when he goes Hornby will again hit the buffers I am sure anyway let's clear that away because it's a mess and I'll just reach over there here is what we were just looking at so okay I'll just pop the body off which is usually quite easy there we go okay I'll just take those off because they're loose so the first thing you can see is the Hornby mechanism in a standard Lima chassis frame um, and I have modified the ends so that I can sit the um, cab units in the right place at the right height and they actually sit nicely inside the Lima body I've started painting the inside so that for when I put the lighting in everything gets better um, I've taken all the glazing out and put these in which actually rest against these tops of these chassis rails um, where the glazing would normally have rested. Um, it gives me a lot more room in the top because the glazing rather filled the, the roof. Um, now I've got plenty of room in the top for more things, more weights, decoders, etc. Um, I have a decoder in it, as you can see, which is just stuck to the top of this. I'll take those off because there's only four. Which is stuck to the top of this... Uh, <coughs> bogey at the moment um, <coughs> excuse me but I have done the conversion pretty much the way James who was the the guy who um, first proposed it back in 2010 uh, pretty much to his specification I, I would like to thank James if by some quirk of fate he watches this video um, then um, I would like to thank him 
Unfortunately, he's no longer a member of RM Web, so I can't get in touch with him and say, you know, I've done this. I could post on the end of the, um, uh, on the end of the uh, um, thread on RM Web, um, but the last post on there was at least seven years ago, um, and I just think posting on a thread again that's that old isn't such a clever idea um might decide to do it but don't suppose anybody will ever see it so um let's have a closer look at what we've done here then so the lima chassis frame has got a big hole in one end where the lima bogey sits and a smaller hole in the other uh, sorry and no hole in the other end where the other bogey sits in a hole. Um, so what I had to do was cut out enough space for the Hornby bogey, let's do it this way up, for the Hornby bogey to fit in and rotate at this end, which is the end that had no hole at all. And I have actually done that and you can just about see there where I've cut it out. I cut it out to about here actually. And at this end, I didn't have to cut it out at all, but I did have to remove some protrusions that came down here from the old Hornby, sorry, the old Lima power bogey mount, which dropped below the chassis frame a little bit um, because Lima uses a standard method. Um, then the bogies are mounted, the Hornby bogies are then mounted on plastic card it's white because I didn't have any black but it doesn't show when the locos in operation um, this is 60 thou thick plastic card um, there's another piece of 60 thou thick stuck to the top of it in both cases um, and they are drilled one eighth of an inch to take the Hornby bogies and then on top of that this piece here is another long strip of 60 thou plastic card um, which closes the top of the hole here that's left when you take the weight out <coughs> excuse me and to that i have sat the motor now i have done exactly what james said that he did on his conversion and that is held the motor in place with silicon sealant it's it's solid i can pick it up by the motor if i can get hold of it it's it's very good for holding it in. I thought at first I haven't got any silicon sealant, but I did have. Um, but um, I thought of epoxy. That's messy stuff. And I also thought of trying hot melt glue. The hot melt glue was useless. It didn't stick to the motor. It just fell off. Um, and it barely stuck to the plastic card. So um, I decided that hot melt wasn't an ideal way of doing it. Um, the, the, the mechanism is identical to the way it was working in the Hornby, apart from the fact the motor is sitting a little tiny bit higher than it did in the Hornby version. Um, and the reason for that is because of the way that Lima's chassis is done. Um, but uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't caused any suffering at all of the mechanism. Um, because these carden shafts will work perfectly at that angle, as you've seen when it runs. Now, one thing I was very worried about, oh, by the way, the electrics, the, all the wiring in here is not in any way intended to be permanent. It is just temporary because I'm going to do the wiring properly. But I just needed a decoder in it, temporary, to try it out and, and satisfy myself that my worries about did it weigh enough were unfounded and as you can see they are it was pulling those nine vehicles no problem it's the beauty of having 12 wheels driving it uh, it really does make uh, for a loco that can pull anything its total weight is about 260 grams with body on um, which is not unreasonable but when you consider that the Hornby original weighs more like 460 pounds, uh, pounds? 
460 grams, um, then you can see that we are light by 200 grams, which I did think might be a problem. Um, most of the weight of that, or a lot of it, about 70 grams of it, is actually in this box here. Now that is actually the Hornby uh, battery and fuel tanks, battery boxes and fuel tanks. Here is the Lima one that I cut off, um, because the Hornby one looks just, it's just got so much more detail than if we compare the two. It's just got so much more detail, especially in this end, that you can see a bit better if I turn it around here. Whereas the Lima one, if I can get it the same way around, the relief is less. It just doesn't look so nice. Um, so I used the Hornby one, which is actually mostly made out of that dreadful Mazak. Um, but uh, I knocked it out of the bottom of the chassis and it came with a piece of the bottom of the chassis. But as it stands there, it's just glued on with super glue. Um, and then those plastic battery boxes that Hornby have fitted, which are separate, I um, filled with liquid gravity. And that was where I got about pretty much 70 grams of weight um, and then I fitted this piece of plastic card over the top so that I get a smooth surface to fit the motor to um, it does have to be cut back here so that the bogies can pivot properly um, but that's not a problem not a, the hardest thing to cut is this steps in the chassis here which as you can see aren't perfect because the Hornby um, cab interiors of on the floor are very nicely made here's another one that i made earlier uh, are very nicely made um and do have a lot of detail ready fitted so i thought i can't pass them up so i decided to make them into an assembly on the hornby version the rear piece is fitted to the chassis and the lower piece sits in the body with the lighting in there and as you can see there's quite a decent gap now for, for, for me putting my lighting in for my loco and this one of course has a different lighting setup it's got the marker lights at the top because this came from a skinhead um, this is not a skinhead this has got the marker lights at the top it's also got the high vis light there and then just two reversing lights it has been completely modernized by British Railways uh, away from the old style of lighting. I'm just going to pick that up before I tread on it. There we go. Right. So, that was one piece of the lemur that I cut off. Um, <coughs> here's a, here are the other pieces that I cut off the ends. They came from there and that was the little bit that was underneath to make the step. Um, so, uh, as you can see, I have hacked the lemur about a little bit. You wouldn't, you don't have to do that. You can avoid fitting the cabs if you like, or you can fit them a bit too high. It really wouldn't matter too much um, if you just wanted to see cab detail. I intend to put cab lights um, and probably TTS sound into it as well as I'm going this far. I've got some glazing on order because I've took, taken the lemur glazing out. Um, and I've got some uh, southeastern fine cast f flush glaze on order. It's not the best. I mean, laser glaze is better, but um, it, I find it just so difficult to deal with Shoreplan, who make the laser glaze. You don't seem to be able to order anything off their website. I've sent them emails that they've never answered. So I give up with them. I know people do manage to buy from Shoreplan, and I guess they do it by waiting for an exhibition and then going to buy it. But we can't do that. There are no exhibitions at the moment. So, you know, you pay your money, takes your choice. I bought South Eastern Finecast. It's probably cheaper and it's probably easier to fit. I don't really know. Um, what I intend to do electrically is put a couple of uh, stand-ups along the top here. And at one end, which will actually be... Uh, let's get this the right way round. Yeah, that goes that way around as it happens. Yeah, so it should actually be this end. I want to fit not this 
board, which is the old Hornby board, but I want to fit a, new, a different one. This this is over complicated for DCC locos. It's brilliant for DC locos, and you know, hats off to Hornby for that design, where they actually use current sources to drive the LEDs, which means that over the massive variation of voltage, once the lights come on, they stay at constant brightness, which is good. But for DCC, it's just a, an extravagance that's unnecessary. So I should probably use that little bit of it on the end to get the DCC socket for the um, decoder. And the rest of it I will probably make out of a piece of strip board. I'll probably mount it effectively that way around. I'll make the rest of it out of a piece of strip board um, and mount my resistors on it to drive all the lighting. Um, and connect the motor uh, to the decoder etc and I will probably do my usual of fitting a decoder like this one a cheap 10 quid decoder plus um, a TTS decoder which I will use just for the sound uh, I may do that I may actually not do that and I may splash out and decide to buy a better sound decoder for it I am keeping the options open there until I have fitted everything and it's ready for the decoder then I will take my view on how well I've done with the whole conversion because it could all yet turn to crap <laughs> there's a lot of work to do one of the nasty jobs is going to be here fitting the um, windscreen wipers which have to be fitted in these vertical pillars. Now, the first thing is I've already, in, in, since I took them off of the original, they, here is the original, and they fit into these holes here. That you can see, I hope, if that's in focus. Um, and having taken those off of the original, uh, I lost two of them, one after the other. They pinged out of my tweezers. Luckily, my wife's got far better eyesight than I have, and she found them both on my brown floor carpet. Um, they are now safely in a plastic bag, um, and I am going to come up with a better method of holding them so that they won't ping. Probably um, one of those uh, sticky pickup sticks, um, which you can get, or a homemade version which with a bit of blue tack stuck on the end. Um, just so that I can hold the damn things but even then drilling the holes is not easy because you've got to drill them at exactly the right angle in order that they will sit against the windscreen and not stick out forwards and the angle's not obvious so um, that is one thing that I am dreading doing uh, I've got to make some lighting as I say which will fit into here and the idea will be that it will be sat on the end there and the body has to slide over it and the light the LEDs that will be in here have to exactly match up with a, a little bit of fiber optics in here by the um, get that round there with some fiber optics in here for the high intensity light and here for the rear lights and then up in the cab up the top here I'll probably fit some longer fibre optics and just here on the top of the then fitted um, cab interiors up here I have the ability to fit a light an LED or two to drive the um, the two marker lights and one for the cab lighting so a lot of work still to do um, and um, I may actually, although I don't think it's going to help me, I was thinking of maybe enlisting the help of um, uh, the company Electronics, um, I can't remember what they're called, that make the uh, lighting kits for all sorts of Lima Locos. I will add more weight to it if I possibly can, um, and I have a few places in the body where there won't be anything like up here next to the bogies where I could add some weight at this end and this end um, 
and I can add some stick on car weights. It's often what I use. It's all right. That was my glaze falling over for some reason. Yeah, let me just lean across again. Sorry about this. And there we go. I often use these stick on steel weights that they put on uh, on car wheels so they stick they don't fly off very often um, and uh, that's a 10 gram one you can get five and ten grams the five grams are exactly half the size of the tens um, and you know I reckon my my first estimation was that I might be able to get an extra 30 grams in each end which would be another <coughs> oh, voice went. Would be another sixty grams, which would allow me to push the weight up from around two fifty to just over the three hundred, about three hundred and ten. Now, which I think would be a little more useful than two sixty. But we'll see. You've got to be careful because the ends of the Backman, sorry, Backman, the ends of the of the Lima um, chassis frame are not very strong and if you manage to put too much weight on them um, they will bend down and you cannot afford them to bend down too far because they will interfere with the bogies so far I've not had too much trouble as you can see it will run all the way around my layout and I've had it on two different tracks and it's fine so that is what I've been playing with over the last couple of days um, and that my, my progress has just been playing with locos. I shall probably do this for another week um, and then I must dismantle the um, new part of the layout again which means losing all the track which means no running sessions at all um, and then I can uh, start to do the wiring job which I am not looking forward to but the more I leave it, the more I think of ideas that will help me to make it easier. So, I'm going to wind this video up now, say thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.